Okay, good morning class. How are you? Okay, welcome to our English class. Okay, today we are going to start another lesson about uh, you know that today is uh, Wednesday, the first April 2020. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, reading comprehension. We are going to talk about reading comprehension. So let's go to the course. Okay, I have just told you that uh, today we are going to see uh, reading comprehension. You know that the reading comprehension is not easy. So I have decided to help you master the reading comprehension skills in English. So there are some questions I have asked. The first question of this is, what is reading comprehension in English? What is reading comprehension in English? Reading comprehension. So, in reading comprehension, we have some element we have to know. What comprehension is? Comprehension. This word, what is it? Comprehension. Comprehension. So, we have defined comprehension like comprehension is the ability to understand something. You have to know this word. The ability. The ability to understand. To understand something or Actual understanding of something. Actual understanding of something. This means that comprehension means comprehension means the ability to understand something or actual understanding of something. This is about the comprehension. Comprehension has another definition. Comprehension is what is perception, is also apprehension, is discernment and knowledge. This, you can take them as uh, synonyms of uh, comprehension. But here it is a definition. Comprehension is perception, apprehension, discernment, and uh, knowledge. So, I'm going to give you some synonym about uh, comprehension. Here are some synonyms. Comprehension synonym, understanding, to understand, uh, understanding, intelligence, intellect, the mind, the reason, Mental capacity. The mental capacity is what is the, to comprehend something. Eh? Comprehension. So, some synonym about comprehension is understanding or understanding, intelligence, intellect, mind, reason, mental capacity. So, let's uh, recap what comprehension is. Comprehension, I have just told you that it is the ability. To understand something or actual something or actual understanding of something. Comprehension is perception, apprehension, discernment, and knowledge. Some synonym about comprehension. Comprehensions are understanding, the intelligence, the intellect, the mind, the reason, the mental capacity. Now, what is the question we are going to ask? What is reading comprehension? What is reading comprehension? Reading comprehension? Reading comprehension is the ability. Here we are also the word ability to process text. To process. The ability to process text to understand its meaning. To process text means to understand what the text means. And to integrate with what the reader already knows. Maybe you have some background about something. And if you read the text, you can understand it. So, reading comprehension is the ability to process text, understand its meaning, and to integrate with what the reader already knows. So, we are going ahead with another question. After asking about what a reading, question is, a reading comprehension is, today we are going to add you something else. What are the purpose? What are the purpose of Reading comprehension. We have asked you the first question what reading comprehension was. And right now we are asking you another question. The purpose. The purpose. The purpose. What is the purpose of reading comprehension? Why are we reading? We are reading for what? So the purpose of reading is a comprehension. We are reading to comprehend something. Uh, reading. The purpose of reading is comprehension. That means that getting meaning from written text. You read a text and you understand. There's a purpose of reading. Okay. 
The major goal of reading comprehension is to help students develop knowledge, uh, develop their knowledge, develop their skills, uh, experiences when uh, they must have if they are to become competent and enthusiastic readers. So let us take again what the purpose of reading comprehension is. The purpose of reading comprehension is comprehension. The purpose of reading, if you read something, is to comprehend, to understand it. Getting meaning from written text. Written text, there are many kinds of texts. Okay. A major goal. The major goal. So, let us uh, underline what the major goals. The major goal of reading. The major goal of reading. Reading here. Major goal of reading. If you read, what can we get? Of reading comprehension is to help, uh, help, help students develop. We are going to help students to do what? To develop their knowledge. If their knowledge is developed, it can be helpful for them. Uh, to develop their knowledge, develop their skills and experiences they must have. They must have if this were to very important if they are to become competent so you are ready to become what to become competent to become competent and enthusiastic readers okay so up about after reading uh, what the reading is after reading completion is after the purpose of this there are some advantages some uh, uh, benefits you can get from reading now what are the benefits of reading comprehension what are the benefits the benefits hmm? the benefits what are the benefits of reading comprehension so so i have uh, uh, select some uh, benefits for this now 10 benefits for for reading yeah, if if you read maybe i think that you'll get uh, uh, 10 uh, benefits from reading okay let's go the first if you read what can you get the first benefit is you ask the students what can you get if you read reading students who read often and widely get better at it students who read often read often and widely get better of it after all practice makes perfect isn't it of course in almost everything humans do and reading in no difference so the first benefit is students who read often and why they get better uh, you get better of reading it okay this second benefit reading exercises our brain our brain to exercise like sport when you practice sport if you read you exercise your brain so reading exercises our brain our brain our brain is doing exercises okay reading exercises our brain reading is a much more complex task than the human brain rather than watching tv for example reading strengthens brains connections and builds new connections you see okay let's go ahead quickly reading improves concentration reading improves improve what concentration okay if you want to be more concentrated if you keep on reading you will see your concentration be strengthened reading improves concentration students uh, have to sit still and quietly so that they can focus on the story when they are reading if they read often, they will develop the skill. What they are going to develop? The skill to do this for longer. Okay, so let us recap the, uh, the first, the fifth, what I just said. The first, students who read often widely get better of it. Okay, read exercise our brain. Reading exercise our brain. Reading improves uh, what? Our concentrations. Okay, we go ahead with the fourth. Reading 
teaches students about the word. Teaches, reading teaches. Okay, this is very good. Reading teaches students about the world around them. Students about the world. The world. Where are they living? They know about, uh, about the world. Okay, if you read, you are in Burkina Faso or you are in class, you are at Medina, you can know something which is happening uh, in the world. Maybe in, in Africa, in the United States of America or in Europe or in Australia or in Asia. You may know all of this. Okay, reading teaches students about the world around them. Through reading, a variety of books students learn about people. Okay, that's good. If you read, what can you learn? If you read, you learn about people. You learn about people. You learn about people, you can learn about places. And you can also learn about events outside of their own experience. You are in Burkina Faso. If you read books, you may learn about people who are living somewhere else. And they, you know maybe uh, some places and events outside of their own experience. Okay, reading improve also what? Reading improve also vocabulary. As students, if you read, your vocabulary level will be improved. Uh, improved vocabulary and what? And your language skill. And your language skill. Okay. Really improves vocabulary and language skills. Students learn new words as they read. Okay. If you want to learn new words, the best way for you is to read. If you read, if you read, you are students. If you have to read books, students read. If they read books, they may, they may learn new words, okay? You will learn new words, okay? Students learn new words as they read. Subconsciously, they absorb information on how to structure sentences, to structure, this is very important. How to structure sentences, this are very important. They learn how to structure sentences and how to use words, how to use words, and other language features, other language features, effectively in the writing and speaking, in the writing, in the writing, writing, sometimes you do writing your essay, and you are going to speak. If you read, you will learn many things. Okay, reading improves vocabulary and language skills. Students, you as a student, if you read, you learn new words as you read. Subsequently, you absorb information on how to start your sentences and how to use words and other language features effectively in your writing. And you, you student in your writing and when you are going to speak, okay? The, the points which can help you when you read, is reading develop, reading develops what? Develops a student's imaginations. Uh, reading develops a student's imaginations. You, if you read, you are a student, if you read, your imagination will be developed. As we read, our brains, our brain translates what? The descriptions we read of people. We read of our people. The discussion we read of people, uh, the people, places, uh, and things into pictures. Okay. As we read, our brains translate the descriptions we read of people, places, and things into pictures. While we are engaged in a story, we are also imagining how character is feeling. You see? Yeah, you may imagine how the character, the person who plays the role in a uh, in a game or in a theater or in a book, the main character, you can imagine uh, the a feeling. Young students, you are young students, then bring this knowledge into the everyday play. You see, reading develops a student's imagination. If you read, your imagination will be developed as 
we read, our brain translates the descriptions we read of people, places, and things into words, into pictures. Into pictures, this word is very important, the pictures, into pictures, okay? While we are engaged in a story, we are also imagining how a character is feeling. How a character is feeling. Okay? Young students then bring this knowledge into their every play. Okay. Reading helps students to develop empathy. Okay? If you read, you are a student, you read, your empathy will be developed. Uh, your empathy. Uh, that's very important. Okay? As students develop, they begin to imagine how they would feel how they would feel in that situation one day if they are in a, if they are in a situation okay that can help you okay reading helps students to aim to develop empathy as a student develop they begin not to imagine how they would feel in that situation okay reading is also a fun Okay, that's very important. It's a fun. It is also a fun. Okay, reading is a fun. Reading is a fun. A book or an e-reader doesn't take up much space, and it's light to carry. So you take it anywhere, so you can never be bored if you have a book in your bag. You see, it's a fun. Reading is a fun. Okay, if you read. By, by playing, I feel that it's very helpful for you to get uh, things uh, you don't experience. Okay, a book, a or they may maybe today we can have a book or a reader. Okay, it doesn't take up much space, was very uh, not that big, very short, very, very good to, for you to carry. So, take it anywhere so you can never begin. Uh, you can never begin. So you can never be bored if you have a book in your bag. Okay, reading is what is great way to spend time together. You and your family, if you read, it will be an occasion for you to develop what you call reading skills. Okay, last time I have given you some lessons on reading skills. Okay, to spend time, spend time, spend time uh, together. So right now you are at home, you are confined, you are living with your parents, you have to create a time to read books. Okay? Reading together on the sofa at home, okay, you are sofa at home, or the bedtime before you go to bed, you may be on your bed and read stories or something else, stories and visiting the library are just some ways of spending time together. Right now you are confined. Don't forget to read. Read and read. It will be helpful for you. Students who read achieve. Achieve better in school. Students who read achieve better in school. Okay? This is very important. Uh, students who read achieve better. Achieve better to school. Students who read achieve better in school. This point is very important. Reading promotes achievement in all subjects. Uh, promote achievement. Uh, achievement, uh, promotion. Don't forget, if you read, you'll get promotion. Okay? Reading promotes achievement in all subjects. Not just English. Students who are good readers tend to achieve better across the curriculum. So these are very important. You know, there are many points uh, you can have uh, apart from reading. So don't forget, okay, if you ask uh, some questions, you can uh, ask me some questions and uh, I'm going to answer you. So let's go ahead. Now, what are the objectives? What are the objectives of reading? Uh, the objective of reading comprehension. So the objective, we have two objectives. The first is... Uh, it develop a selection of pre-reading strategies. Pre-reading strategies to do what? To improve likelihood of comprehension. This is the first objective. Develop it. Develop 
uh, a selection of pre-reading strategies to improve the likelihood of comprehension. Okay, the second objective is uh, to develop what? Key reading. The key reading sub skills such as what? Scheming. Scheming is very important. Scheming, if you read, you'll get some skills. Some skills, apart from the are scheming, the scanning, identifying the main idea or a text or paragraphs, and guessing the vocabulary. These are very important. Guessing the vocabulary from context. So if you read, reading combinations may be helpful for you if you read. The first objective, develop a selection of pre-reading strategies to improve the likelihood of comprehension. And the second objective, to develop key reading sub-skills such as screaming, scanning, identifying the main ideas of text or paragraphs, and getting the vocabulary from the context. So, you see, now I'm going to ask you some questions. What kind of different questions do we ask you when you read? What are questions that we are going to ask? What are the four? So we are select four. There are four types of questions. There are four types of questions in English. In English, there are four types of questions. The first, general or yes, no questions. General or yes, no question. Yes, no question. Yes, no question. The second, the second, special questions using WH, WH. Don't forget the WH words. You know WH words. I'm going to explain to you about them. So, and the third, choice questions and disjunctive or tactile questions. So, we have four kinds of questions. Yeah. General or yes, no question, special questions using WH words, choice questions, and disjunctive or tactile questions. Okay, let's go on the first. General or yes, no questions. What is it? General or yes, no question. Okay, common question that can be answered with a simple yes or no, or logically called yes, no question. Simple questions which can be answered by yes or no. We call it yes or no questions. As a rule, this kind of questions, as a rule, this kind of question relates to the whole, the whole, don't forget it, the whole sentence, the whole sentence and not a spirit element of it. Okay, the yes or no questions, what can we do about this? The, these common questions, that can be answered with a simple, a simple yes no question, or logically called yes no question. As a rule, this kind of question relates, relates to the whole, the whole sentence, the whole sentence, okay, and not to a separate element of it. I'm going to give you some examples. For some examples, do you like this country? Do you like this country? Okay. Are they, are they, are they ready for the trip? Can you, uh, can I call my brother? Does your father know about your new job? You know, you see, here are some questions. To ask such general questions, general questions, 